video from the vampire just here to give you another another video my friends math video Woohoo! all right we ready to get going it's been a while since I've done this here I feel a little rusty here we're looking at the go math chapter one review I'm calling this go math chapter one review one as I assume there will be more than one video let's cr let's get cracking as they say it says find the property that each equation shows Remember, the equation, they keep using number sentence, but a number sentence and an equation mean the same thing. However, the word equation sounds a little bit more sophisticated, like you're a little bit above the old fifth grade level. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different equations that are listed above, as you can see. And let me get the screen shade all the way down. And... Can I make that go up a little? I sure can. Okay, just kind of haven't used this here in a little while. I'm feeling kind of rusty, you know, just a little rusty these days. Okay, uh, let's get real here, Mr. Warler. Come on. So we look at these equations, and the first thing that I have to say is that, well, um, I need a pen. Give me a pen. Or actually, you know what? I don't need a pen. Actually, I thought I needed a pen. I don't. It says that the, we have the commutative property of multiplication. We have the commutative property of... Addition, I'm going to put you over here. And associative property of addition, the associative property of multiplication. We have the identity property of addition, the identity property of multiplication. So basically, you can see we have three properties that have to do with multiplication, but they're very, very similar. The commutative property, pretty straightforward. The commutative property says, it states, and proves that how you order the terms won't change the product or the sum. What do I mean by that? I mean if you say 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2, then you're saying that you're not changing the value of that equation. And then when I look up here, I do see something like that. I see this right here, 78 plus 5 equals 5 plus 78. So this here would need to come, now this, uh, this is addition and this is multiplication, so we're going to put this, this guy right here. This is the commutative property. We switch to 78 and the 5. If I were to get a pen here, let's have some fun. I'll use my magic pen if it'll work for me. Okay. There you go. If we switch these around, it won't make any difference. The answer is going to be the same. I know this pen is so magical. Woohoo! Look at that. It just disappeared. Now, let me see here. Oh, my goodness. I am rusty using this. Okay. So then I'm going to find another one, and there it is. 15 times 4 equals 4 times 15. Now, the associative property states that how you group the terms, and re remember when I, I use the word terms, I mean 4 is a term, 15 is a term, over here we have a term, that's what we mean by term. I know I'm using these words, and they're probably some of them are new for you, but the word term is probably a good thing to learn now. So as you can see, we have 1, 2, 3 terms here. We also have 1, 2, 3. In fact, the terms are exactly in the same order. But look how they're grouped. This time they're grouped 16 times 3, whereas here it's grouped 12 times 6. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. I'm going to bring it all the way down here because it's the associative property of multiplication. There is not addition. Well, that means the same one here looks exactly the same, uh, except that we have addition. The terms here are grouped differently. On our very first part of this equation, we have the 4 and the 56 that are grouped together. However, here we have the 42 and the 4. These properties state it does not change the the outcome, meaning it's not going to change the product and it's not going to change the sum. And again, the sum, answer to an addition problem, product, the answer to a multiplication problem. Finally, we have the identity, identity property, and basically it states that whatever you multiply or even add, that you're going to get that same uh, factor or add-in. So in this case, 43 times 1 is always going to give you 43. Any number multiplied by 1 always gives you that number. This is the identity property. It doesn't change the identity or the name. So therefore, um, the identity property... Oops, I got these reversed. Uh, you were watching that going, Mr. Wara, excuse me. <clears throat> you know you have that in the wrong location. <laughs> anyway, so we have 43 times 1 over here for multiplication. 23 plus 0 is the identity property of addition because it gives that same number back to you and that would only be zero so one plus zero equals one 
5 plus 0 equals 5. So whenever it does that, that's the identity property, okay? Now, during this video, there will be some code words going up. What I do is I simply put little syllables and letters you're going to see. When you see those letters appear, write them down as quickly as you can because I'll be using my magic pen and they will disappear. And when you get all those words or letters together, it should spell a word. Well, maybe not a word that you know at this point, but it will spell a word. So kind of keep that in mind because I know some of you are new to this uh, kind of a video land here, math video land with Mr. War here. So now we're going to continue on. It says here for numbers 2A through 2D, there they are. It says select true or false for each statement. All right, I can deal with this. Bring it on. That's what I say. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'd love the crayon because I can color, but I want something bright actually. You know what? Where is my, uh, we'll just do the regular pen. And we'll use red to make it stand out. So here it says 40 is one-tenth of 4,000. Now what's crucial when we compare numbers is we need to look at the value of each number. See, here we have two digits, and the 4 is in the tens place. So that 4 has a value of 40. Of course, there aren't any 1s, and that's why we say 40. Whereas when we look over here, look at the 4 is not in the tens place. My goodness, it's not even in the hundreds place. It's in the thousands place. So when I compare these two numbers, I have to look at that first number because these words that follow are comparing to that number. So here it says 40 is one-tenth of. Now, if it tells you that there's a fraction here, and it's saying that it's one-tenth of that number, it's saying that this number has to be smaller. And it is, in this case, because remember when we did our decimals, we have over here, we have the tenths, here's the ones, hundreds, I'm sorry, tens, hundreds, and here would be the one-tenth spot right here. 4,000 is way over here. Now, it's a little ways off. So if we have the number 40, is that one-tenth of a power? Meaning that is 4,000 10 times greater than 40? Because that's saying this in reverse. It's the inverse that we learned. 4,000, is it 10 times uh, as much as 40? Uh, I would say no. Look at this. Here's our 40. Therefore, we have two powers of 10s here. It is actually 100 times because if you take 40 times 100, you'll see the two more zeros added on to that 40 will give us 4,000. So this is true? Absolutely not. This is false, my friends. False, I say. And then we have 170 is 10 times as much as 17. Well, first thing is, if it's saying it's 10 times, this number must be greater than 17, and by looking at it, you can see that it definitely is. Is it 10 times as much? Um, yeah, I would say so. Look, at there's your 1 power of 10 sitting there. 17 and 17 are the same. You have that 1, 0, 1, 0 here. This is base 10 uh, math, my friends. We use everything by the power of 10. So yes, this statement here would be true. Now we come over here, 440, is it 10 times as much as 4,400? Again, this number is smaller, and so if that number's smaller, how could that number be 10 times as much? That's not, oh my goodness, that's false right from the get-go, because this number's smaller. See, when we're saying something's 10 times as much, it means it's 10 times greater, okay? As much is maybe another way we could say greater. Here we have 23,000 is 10 times as much as 230. Well, this is definitely larger, no question, but just 10 times as much? I don't know, if I gave that 10 times over here to make them the same, I'm not seeing the same number, my friends. I see 2,300 and I need 23,000. So no, I would say that one is false. So, trying to fool us, but uh, we were, you know, we were taking our time. Now I'm going to let you know these videos are going to run approximately 15 minutes. That's kind of the goal here. So I just want to let you know. And um, hey, you might want to pay attention to that. It may be important if you want to get credit for this assignment. Goodbye. And now we come back to, again, another page. We look at number three here. Again, this is all review. Uh, so this is kind of like where, you know, people say, hey, I've been there, done that. Number three says, it says, select other ways to write. Five thousand. I mean, sorry, five hundred thousand. Uh, five hundred 
65,309. I'm sorry, I, my brain was doing two things at once. I was thinking, how I can make this go down at the same time I'm trying to read a number. This is mark all that applies. So what that means, when they say mark all that apply, it means that there could be more than one answer. We could have many answers. We could have all of them could be uh, circle or, or colored in, or just one or none. So we have to be very careful on these. Uh, let's go ahead and get a, a pen again. We'll st uh, let's do purple this time. So here it basically says, can we write this number up here like this? Hmm, let me see. Well, I know the 5 here is in the 100,000th place, so that's a good sign. 5 times 100,000, 500,000. Yeah, that works for me. Now the 6 here, is that 6 times 10,000? It's in the 10,000th place, so yeah, that's good. How about over here? The 5 is in the thousands place. All right, good. Three. Whoa, what happened to the 3? Hmm, 3 is in the hundreds place. We should have 3 times 100, but we don't have it. Uh, we don't have any 10, so we wouldn't have to write that down, and we do have 1, 1, 9 times 1. So no, this is not true. It was almost, you know, the problem was trying to trying to fool us by having us go through it too quickly and then maybe forget about the three. So I will not be coloring that one in. 565,000, 565,000, that looks good. 390, 300, ooh, that's not 390, that's 309. Oh, I don't think so. Nice try, but we're not gonna, you know, we're not biting, you know what I'm saying? All right, we come down to C, 500,000, looks good, plus, 60,000 plus 5,000, so 500,000, 60,000, 5,000, plus 300, plus 9. I like that one. That looks good. These are all matching up. Finally, we have 500,000, okay, plus 5,000s, okay. What about the 6? Yeah, we don't have any 6 10,000s, though. 300s. Nine ones, everything's all, but we're missing the six here. Wow, there's only one that we would have we be marking on this particular problem. Trying to fool us. Yes, I say, my friends. It is I, the vampire. No, I, I need to really work on my vampire voice, you know? Halloween is coming. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so what do we have here? Number four, Skylar. She's famous. Oh, let me change the color here, make it blend in a little bit nicer, like a blue. Okay. There we go. This is a, whoa, I just now saw the problem. Are you kidding me? Skylar earned 200,000 points on Class Dojo. <laughs> yeah, right, huh? That's what we say. Yeah, this is 10 times, oh my goodness, 10 times as many Class Dojo points as she earned last week. So you thought this was a lot? You should have seen how many she won last week. It says, how many Class Dojo points did Skylar earn last week? Okay, so if we have this number, and we're basically saying that she, she earned 200,000, right? And then it says last week, it was 10 times as much. That's like saying 10 times 10 to the first power, right? So we're adding one more power of 10, that's all. And so I'm gonna just kind of, can I scoot this guy down? Yeah, move him down over here, like that. Pretty sneaky, I know. <laughs> Mr. War, I have some moves, watch out. Okay, now we just put in our 200,000. We have to add one more power of 10 because it's 10 times as many. Now I'm coming up with, yeah, Skylar earned 2 million class dojo points. I think the machine would probably just kind of explode or something. I don't know about that. Anyway, that's a little bit funny. Now this one here may make a little circle like that, but that's the letter you're looking for, though, right there. You see that? All right. So don't be fooled that it does that. It just does that if it's an O. Get it? All right. I didn't tell you that. So now we come down, and we're going to do one more problem here, I think, and this will be the last one that we'll do for this particular video. Moving on. See, is there a way I can get all the way down? Yeah. Come on. You can do it, Mr. War. Okay. So here we are, and we want to... It says, Timothy earns $85 per week tutoring first graders in his neighborhood. Hey, he should take us all out to lunch. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Wow, wouldn't that be nice? Um tutoring and such a good cause helping first graders which expression can be used to show how much money he earns in six weeks all right so these kind of problems can get kind of tricky so let's go ahead and just 
to slow it down because when we ever do problem solving, we always want to try to take a look at it. First is reading the problem, understanding what we know and what we need to find out. We know he how much we know how much he earns per week. And this is going to be important. Okay, the fact that they're first graders, not that important. It could be second graders. But also important though is um, that he's going to that we need to know how much he's going to earn in six weeks. So this is what we know. Okay, and this is what the end is. Now this is 85 times six. We could get our answer, but that's not how they had this expression. No, they had the expression in the distributive property form, if you if you will. So we have something like okay, here's six weeks times the eighty dollars plus six weeks times the five dollars. Okay, that actually I like a. Let's see if let me check them all. Six plus eighty. Uh, I don't think we're adding here. We're looking for six times eighty-five. So this isn't going to work at all. So I'm just going to cross that out. And over here we have six times eighty. Okay, that sounds good, but times 6 times 5? Well, we're not multiplying that because we're taking this distributive property. We're saying 80 times 6, 8 dollars. And then we have to add the 80 times 6. See how we're doing that? And that's exactly what we chose up here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What did I just say here? 80 times 6. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I say 80 again. This should be 5. 5 times 6. I was just doing that 80 twice. And so C, putting the times there makes it not not good. And then over here we have 6 plus 80. Again, we're not adding. So definitely A is our right answer. Okay, my friends, we are coming to the end. And that means that you're going to need this in order to receive credit for this assignment. Now, if you put that all that code word together, you should come up with a special code word that you will enter after you turn in this assignment. Boys and girls, girls and boys, hey, community property, get it? Ha ha. Okay, if you see the end of the video, I will see you next time. Take care, my friends. Live long and prosper.